for sleeps. We greatly appreciate it. There's even a match arena, so be sure to utilize that as we get into our first fight of the night. Vile versus Veil 47. Yeah, and this is going to be a very interesting matchup. You know, I was just talking a lot about Linnea earlier today. And uh, as a character who has a lot of, like, high mobility options, she can tend to deal with a lot of the cast pretty well. Markava, though, is able to cover a lot of those angles that she likes to be in and can play out of the spacing, just like you're seeing right here in the corner, that it can be a little bit troublesome. But Veil vale 47 still finding a way out and finding a first big hit for them of the game. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's been a little bit since I've been able to see a Merkava. I know y'all are out here with the noodle-armed alien individual here, but oh my goodness. All right, got the tech after the veil off to get the full screen distance that you need. This is a big Hail Mary. Excellent run up here from Veil. Good patience. Any lesser player definitely would have been called out by that one. Yeah, it's also great recognition to know that you actually have a gap right at the very end that you're able to hit them at. A lot of people wait for the animation to finish and aren't able to get as big of a punish as they'd like. But you're going to see Vale go for a very consistent Helmbreaker Ender after the EX Kuga right there. And that's very good for Lene. You're just going to always be able to like get your best Oki situation. And you saw the Assault J at the very end to close it out. I just thought uh, out of the hit, TNS floated to the top. I was like, <laughs> whoa, we have mods in Uni 2 right now. And suddenly TNS goes to the anyway. Corner carry here. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Vile going to be setting up with Worm here, potentially. We do have that bar to do it. Yep, there it is. Yeah, the good CS recognition goes for ADP, rec uh, recognizes, hey, I've got the meter to spend to be able to cash out a combo afterwards. Should be able to sit just below 3.8k right there. And now you're in a pretty scary situation. She gets to sit at this, like, minus two range and create a lot of big stagger windows that can be hard to try to press out of. And just like that, Veil vale finds another window to get another hit back to the corner. Yeah. Oh, okay. CBO. We're going to spend the IW. Yeah, it should be able to wrap it up. No! no! Just a little bit. It's 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 such a small, insignificant amount of damage that can really send it all away here. Wow, I actually got the 3D out. Yeah, I was surprised that 3D was able to like fully cross over and not get clipped right there yeah. uh, with the uh, the two three sixty. I've been watching. I, I, I was watching the I was uh, the revert set earlier, and Lene yeah. IW was killing like twenty four sevens. I was just like, oh yeah, Lene IW, it's dead. But no, it was slightly not enough there. Well, I was with you. Yeah, those Lene IWs definitely add a lot of damage. IWs in general add so much more damage now than what they mm -hmm. used to in the previous game. Like just damage output is certainly the talk of this yeah. game. You know, we're at just over a month into the release or at least like brackets through tns but i mean yeah just damage output has been insane to watch throughout the life of this game thus far no oh, the rare decent but we're still in we're still in here you got those that, that that's how you know veil's a net player they're ready for <laughs> for any kind of minor input connection that's about to happen they were still able to get that big confirm not able to keep them in the corner but still finding more opportunities Massive lead here for Vale right now. And it's so tough for Merkava to keep out an opponent like Lene. She will stay right in your face. Merkava has this, right? Just the meter reversal to kind of get the opponent off of them. And we'll get an easy corner carry for this one here. No setup off a of worm, but we do have stagger in the delay here for just a moment. All right, full screen flying. No DP though. Yeah, it's it's kind of a hard like DP to react with because it goes up pretty well, but doesn't go forward yeah. a ton. So you have to be really on point with it. So instead, Vale just waited for them to come down, meet on the ground, mm -hmm. and play a little bit more comfortable pace, able to take that round. But now Vile trying to not go down without a fight. Ooh. Yeah, almost got that overhead here. Great reaction with Vale's low button there to get that reach. I think there was a 2B reach there to get this one. I like the use of Vial right now, just constantly using this, the 6 6Bs and 2Bs that was like trying to low profile a lot of the like air movement that Vale yeah. was doing. Uh, not going to work out too well for them as they're going to be stuck on the ground right now holding this flight mix. Just got the simple with the jumping button here, but able to challenge low again is Vale. It'll be another carry. Tons of resources. Honestly, you have that chain shift available to you. Just goes for IW spend. And we'll save that extra resource for a little bit later. No celestial threat quite yet here. We do have an opportunity to build enough meter to get that damage under here in a moment. Yeah, should be. Oh no, didn't opt, uh, pop the CS in the combo right there to guarantee the kill. Oh, that was very, very scrambly right at the very end. I thought that Helmbreaker was, I think both Vale and I thought that Helmbreaker was gonna kill right at the very end right there, but it uh, didn't end up doing it, so they needed one Player, more uh, Characters in general, just always gonna have her turn, whether you like it or not. And Star Underscore gonna have to be very cautious on some of these approaches here up against Wagner, because 
you know, those long-reaching normals, they're really nice, but also can get really blown up by some of the Wagner pressure here. Yeah, and that new tool right there is, I think, one of the big reasons why you're seeing Duffy switch over to this character in the matchup. Uh, that 6-6-FF, uh, the, you know, power geyser that people are seeing come out now is a very, very good tool that you can make safe, and you can also lead into some, like, pseudo mix-ups with it. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're seeing Defiant use it a lot, but start not worried about it at all after getting hit once and finding a good assault confirm right here. Got to just keep them into the corner. Good 3 seasons. Absolutely. Use that as a sim to steal a little bit of that grid there, too, towards the end. Nice slide into the DMs. Another one here to maintain grid superiority. But will that matter in the case of Defiant with 200 meter and Wagner at the forefront of victory? We got a little bit of a shimmy right here to be wary of the reversal Grim Reaper here. The EX Grim Reaper will be something to keep an eye on. But now without... Oh, okay. Yeah, now we got that cycle. That was the big factor in this next interaction sliding into it here star underscore with the round yeah i really like that from star just like playing very defensively and waiting for for defiant to use all their options get that cycle back and take it into their favor uh but it's something you have to be careful about now uh because oh, good csm everything i said doesn't matter anymore csm <laughs> exactly. it worked out. <laughs> It was starting out great, so good for Defiant, just like the first round did. I mean, Defiant had such a strong lead, and then Star Underscore still was able to kind of earn out a victory there. Nice challenge. Like I talked about at the beginning of the set, like, yes, Bordeaux has some pretty excellent range buttons, but some of the startup on these buttons are really going to get challenged out by a character like Wagner. Mm -hmm. And Wagner gets to actually sit at a range that Gord can't really challenge. He's very good up close and about that two-third screen range, but that one-third screen range, Wagner can really, really pressure them. So Star's looking at those opportunities to try to stay up close, and at, but at that point, you have to challenge and guess a little bit. But you can get big reward, just like that IW confirm right at the very end for solid 5k. Pasha, nice, got the guard thrust. Stagger pressure here, good patience from Defiant. We do have that meter. We go for a drill if we want on a big whiff opportunity. Ooh, already got the pillar. Nice. Yeah, and should be able to close it out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's a big thing you're seeing with the Wagner game plan change is a lot of the times where it's like, oh, I would have to use drill to make that kind of punish. You got to use 6-6 force function, and it just opens up a whole new world of different routing opportunities. Ooh. Good DP out saying, I don't care about your Okazeme. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of these newer features for these characters that really start to shine. Like, they are there. you got to start implementing them in your game plan. And a month into this game now, like, yeah, you're going to see a lot of these regularly appear. Good block on the overhead, but the Grim Reaper let's find a way out. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I Oh, I love that. Just, like, recognize, hey, this combo's not going to kill. It's not going to get me to the corner. I might as well just charge, get that cycle. So in this next interaction, I can pop CVO and guarantee the round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a strong return here from Defiant. Able to close that one out after a very interesting back and forth for that first round here. And Defiant still able to, you know, showcase why Wagner can be so difficult to deal with for Gordeaux. Um, mm -hmm. and, and just even across the cast, Wagner can just be difficult to deal with. Yeah, but it's not it's showing that they're not uh, Star isn't out from this, right? There was a lot of yes. opportunities that like Star was like had the right plan, had the right call, even getting some very solid hits. It was just a lot of like oh five C connected and wasn't ready for the hit confirm on it, which is very hard with with Gordo and Jeff. Nice assault, full charge C there too for it. Not full charge. Oh, and getting some free extra damage. Just Star was going for a delay tech right there, so mm. Red Beat gonna work out in Defiance's favor, allowing them to get that uh, charge JC after the drill. Oh, yes, got the 6B. Easy confirm for Defiant, a perfect round. Yeah. And that's where the struggle is in this. Like, if Wagner gets the Gordon to the corner, it can be very, very hard. As you don't have those, like, super fast buttons to deal with it, you have to go for committal oh, options. Oh! oh. oh. Huh. Let go block just a little too soon, right? The follow up here on the DP input from Gordo. Does get with. Nice jump back, able to get the. Oh my goodness. If if you had that confirm after the the, the Grim Reaper yeah. on there, I would have I would have screamed. That would have been crazy. Been too much. Oh no! They thought like a throw was coming, uh, mm -hmm. and Defiant just backed away. Was able to press a button to blow them up for it. Now Star having to play very cautious. See, nice block, Grim. Yes. Grim Reaper the mortal slide though does get checked out. Defiant does have meter here to go for IW. That'll be a game here, 2-0 to zero here for 
defiant to advance against star underscore to give that moment a pause i mean that can kill quite a many player here but we're gonna see who goes on in this next round here gravy jones up against the blue reverberation okay you know the, those those colors are vibrating right now because they got that kuan uh a character that i feel like you like is becoming even more popular especially after crossover yes. arc and seeing how successful that character was with a variety of different play styles yes. Yeah, Crossover Arc was definitely a great showcase of uh, this character, of course, just Union in general, right? You know, thank you so much to the folks over there on the East Coast running that show. Looking at you, Wasty. Yeah, but right now, Gravy Jones has shown that they can put a stop to the the new boss monster in this game. Finding a couple good hits, but Reverberation now getting the flight out. Keep a very confident blocks. Until it's yeah. too late. You can't block forever, despite how well Gravy Jones has blocked a lot of these highs here. And this is another one of those situations where I don't know what Merkava can really do outside of trying to get that muted reversal and be excellent on defense. And we are finding this excellent open here with the hit grab. Oh, and gets the flight into the quick little JA right there. Going to be able to, you know, bring him all the way back. Does have 200 meters, so uh, yes. yeah, should be able to cash out and get about a, a little bit to take home into the next yeah. round. Yeah, 25% of that first bar looking pretty good here. A little over into 30 perhaps here, but either way, that's a good turnaround here for Gravy Jones to get that pick up. And excellent defense really did pay off. But let's see if they can defend even longer past. Oh! You see the floats into nothing. You, you're looking for something to go on and you're overloading the senses here. You're trying to defend as best as you can. This guard thrust was excellent, but flash kick out of that corner. Yeah, I love that use of the flash kick right before the guard thrust as well, going a flash kick into the uh, EX ring just to try to like, right. steal your turn back. But these 4B anti-airs are working out great, carrying Merkava since 2012. And now gonna be able to try to get some good flight out, but just will get flash kicked out of it. Oh yeah, we're just gonna keep trying to chip away here at the house. So now only a single touch is all that we need to take the round. Reverberation does advance for this next round here. Wow, 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 wait a minute. I'm sorry that reach for Merkava, please. Yeah, this is it's it's a very good tool that Merkava has because you see uh, most of them just put out an anti kuan dot, so a lot of this is fresh. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of a lot of these kuans you're seeing go for the two three six a right at the, the round start, which is about fifteen frames. So Merkava actually has a has a has a five b that can reach it. Yeah. Oh, with the eleven frame start up on that one too to get the interrupt just before it could even start there from kuan. So great call. Toss out the trash, put it into the corner. Oh no. Yeah, Gravy Jones has just been playing so on point and playing very, very defense, like uh, reactionary and defensive through these games. You've seen these like super confident walk out of the corner throws that I don't think uh, Reverberation is fully ready for. But they are going to have to be ready to block that high low. See, and that's just that information that we got from the last round here that not every interaction is going to be a hit. So maybe we thought we could potentially challenge there or just duck a little bit early, thinking the low float was coming down. Nice veil off here. At the corner position, you could stagger, could block an overhead from reverberation. And a oh great reaction to the green shield right there. Yeah. That CS is able to get the guaranteed grid break. Yeah, very important here to catch that one singular moment. You might have missed it. I mean, green shield is a pretty big indicator, but when you have CS to help you out, like that is definitely mm -hmm. going to be that all systems go for the grab here. And Gravy Jones definitely took advantage of it. Yeah, and like you'll see some people try like see that green shield come up and then try to like do the optimal like low confirm uh, off of like standing green shield. But Gravy Jones just knew take the big advantage uh, to kill the round with an easy, simple run up throw. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to see them trying to do again. Just re repeat that very, very solid game plan. Don't let reverberation get too much crazy Ooh. mix going on. I mean, look at this. Got the Celestial here, and you are in trouble. You go for CS early, though, so we try to build it right back up. You do have a 100 meter to play with for at least this round. Great use of that that fireball to just like fully like space them outside of that ring that I definitely thought was going to air unblockable them. Gravy Jones knows this matchup better than I do. Clearly finding all these great rewards again and again and again. Yeah, we got a question now. The the profile image on Gravy Jones's card, it does have Kuan in it, so I would imagine you've probably learned this character, one of the newer characters. I think it's probably critical to try to learn these mm -hmm. folks almost immediately, as much as you know, learning your own character changes here. But full screen situation, and Gravy Jones just has to react with a single hit grab here. No matter what you're doing, I'm coming out on top. I have to help lead. 
Yeah, definitely finding like a lot of really good use, uh, like being able to play those ranges that I definitely think that more players are a little bit more comfortable with against Kuon, but just very confident with the aggression to find that opportunity again and again. Oh, 6-6-C oh, getting the full connection, but just choosing the smart here, Ender. Ooh. All right, a little bit of a fallout here on the combo route, but that's okay because we still got corner position, but immediate challenge. I think that was a 2B start into the ring, Oki. Might have been like a misinput there to get that 2B anyway. Yeah. See, okay. I like that. Just be able to take, like, steal your turn back a little bit for reverberation. Mm -hmm. 2 3 6 C. Yeah, nice. just go through and throw punish. More staggers into float. Good block, but unfortunately, blocking low this time does get you opened up, tied up in rounds once again. Yeah. And I, like Rever Reverberation has a uh, like a lot of potential, right? They're very consistently finding these chances to get this high mix again and again and again. Ooh. I just like to see them like find these opportunities to like loop into itself again because a couple of these combos just like that are dropping. Yeah. Yeah, that's certainly critical when you're not getting the Oki position, so you're giving the opportunity for Grave to challenge back, so run away like we just saw here. And now, kind of challenge time and time again. So a little hit grab here from full screen. If you're caught making a mistake, couple of assaults though. Go blocked here from Gravy. No float opportunity quite yet. Oh, they, yeah, that was smart. They, uh, Green Shield, and they, they saw Gravy Jones about to react to it and were just able to see us keep themselves safe. Now get the mix, but Gravy Jones doing a great job of blocking it, spacing themselves out, and fighting these anti-air 4Bs. Okay. Oh, no. Let's open up here. A two-way start. Yeah, once again, recognizing the green shield off that, that post-CS situation, but a good A flash kick right there. Take your turn back. Oh, oh, that was a very fortunate chain shift right there to give you the course correction to know where the... Like, the timing was Ooh. almost perfect because the teleport hit the moment you did CS there, so your character flipped right at the reappearance yep. of Kuon. Nice. Uh, nice. It's, a, it's a good week for Merkava players. Absolutely. Yeah, and I wonder if it was just simply because of flight. It works so differently than what uh, uh, Merkava's does. But here we go. The classic toast with hide up against slush rush sweep. Don't say that five times fast. You're going to screw it up, Tabby. I promise. <laughs> oh, I guarantee you I already have. Don't worry about that. But yeah, this is going to be a very, very fun time right here as Toast has been one of those hide players that's been making the up and comes through the early stages of Uni 2 with these like crazy high damage clips. And Lucas, thank you so much for the $10 contribution to Match Reno. Greatly appreciate it. Oh, nice guard thrust out. And that's going to be the scary thing. While Hyde has that uh, Warple to chip away at your health, even while locking more significantly than others would be able to. All right, nice. Celestial, and, that's going to almost guarantee you like plenty of great setup here for Hilda. Yeah, it's going to give you, you... You gain 250 meter off that quick little Celestial right there and was able to set the Roomba out to uh, to get that new mix that all the Hilda players are looking for. And this is looking very, very good for Slush Rush Sweep right now. They're just able to stay at that perfect Hilda range, constantly opening up Toast with all these different options. And Toast not getting a, great, uh, a ton of great reward when they get those hits in. Goodness. All right, we got the stand shield block though, but yeah, like Toast can't seem to be able to keep that lockdown against Hilda, and this is a minefield to try to proceed through because every time you're taking a step, there's a possibility that the next follow-up comes through. I mean, look at how Hilda can zone that approach. The only thing I can really think of for Hyde here is if you spend it, like there's the rare opportunity that you see beam. It's almost never used right now for for Hyde. You could go for a couple orbitals, but look at what is littering the screen. Like, how do you find an opening and go for that orbital? Celestial well, helps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, getting getting the start right here to be able to just, like, block enough to get that grid going. Good check on the roll. Not able to get a full confirm, but you will with that 236B follow-up. Great patience comes great rewards here for excellent defense and uni. Charge! Oh, my God! That's what you need to do here. You need to take every single opportunity you can to stay at that close range. You see Toast is very willing to use whatever tools they need to. And just like you were saying, the C, the C uh, laser beam follow up coming out. Yes. It certainly help keep things locked down against Hilda. Nice wall combo here. Thanks to the throw. Oh, the assault almost there. It was empty assault. And we got DP on the approach. A very 
minute flash of red there on the chain shift, and what a backdash to avoid the fail off. Full punish from Toast. Excellent turnaround here. You know, it's yeah, not over yeah. until it's over in this matchup. Yeah, th this matchup between these two players, especially, is very, um, is very like swingy. Uh, you see, once one of them is able to get their game plan going, the other one has kind of a hard time fully defending against it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Toast has also recognized that, and that's why they're going for a lot more aggressive options in their game plan, not trying yeah. to play the more like traditional hide hill to match up. Oh no. 2A, got the shield break. And yeah, that's a great point though for Toast to play this aggression. While in grip break, not such a good idea, right? Because you're losing out on shield opportunities here. You have to be very cautious, try to return the favor to build up this grid. All chain shift is very lucky for you. This is a positive spot for Toast right now. Oh, yeah, no. almost had that post CS situation with gaining it right at the very end. But Slush Rush was able to block up until this last hit right here. To be able to get a good amount of damage. More importantly, getting good knockdown. Nice assault. We do have that from far here, at least 100 meter. Oh, yes. Go for the veil off. Absolutely. Will kill. And yeah, opening up with Dash Z. Great start here for Toast to take over that round. Ooh, early pin. Yeah, it may have been an accidental hold as pinning something you don't want to see, normally see super, super early, but ends up working out for them as they get that quick little jump over. That sets up Bloom playing a little bit more aggressively going low this time. So pick up there. All right. Let's rain death from above. Still got that forward approach. Shuts down the dash C attempt here from Toast. No assault for you. Toast opening up the wrong opportunities. It's that frustration that builds up when you're down mm -hmm. almost 100 percent health i gotta make a move i gotta figure something out here and i don't have the meter or resources to do it but i can't survive just holding block this whole time but in this case if you could survive it you can't if you could have survived it the cycle that could give you an opportunity there that cs so crucial at moments like that yeah it's just very it's very very hard to deal with you know these hill players as long as they're recognizing me, hey you're trying to play for the cycle fine i'm just gonna back off set a gloom and charge it can be very, very hard for the, uh, you know, any kind of opponent to be able to fully capitalize on that. Okay, nice. Got the anti-air pickup. Bring it down with the pin. Another room. Ooh, nice block of the cross-up, Tracy. Yeah, there we go. 623C just capitalizing on them, pressing anything from full screen. You can't really afford to do that when the Hilda is sitting on a grip of meter, especially when they have the Vorpal cycle and they're able to regain part of that meter back. You can look at like 140 is basically 200 meter for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and you've been calling it out too, just the difficulty in letting Hilda kind of set up at full screen. It becomes worse and worse, that snowball effect for a character like Hyde. So it is that quick back and forth pendulum swing we're gonna see on offense on either side. Toast wants the exact opposite of what Hilda wants. Hilda wants to be at that full screen to be able to stuff and throw out these long range normals here safely. And Hyde needs to change that with approaching closely the stagger pressure, build up in your Vorpal so you can add more chip damage and make the opponent a little more terrified of the fact that they're blocking in this corner. Yeah, you know, that's actually something interesting. Uh, a lot of, I think a lot of matchups get described as uh, uh, like, who wants to win the Vorpal Cycle and who wants to make sure their opponent doesn't get it. But both mm -hmm. these people both want it and don't want their opponent to have it. Because when right. you see that Vorpal Cycle is sitting on Hyde's favor, you get rounds like that where you die in two hit. Yes. Oh, nice block at the round start here. We've been seeing some explosive starts from Slush time and time again. And honestly, I almost feel like that was just an input error. I've been doing that myself where you link a little bit too fast to the next button and you get yep. the uh, AB ender automatically. Like that's so frustrating, but able to survive out of it here with Toast. Yeah, but Toast is not allowing them to survive too much longer. Gets the falling mm. JA, so that does hit overhead and a quick closeout compared to the last round. Yeah, I mean, that's just an example of how commanding Hyde can be in a matchup like this. Like, as frustrating as it is to deal with Hilda against Hyde in that type of situation, like, where you're full screen and Hyde has to dash up, try to sneak in a dash C in order to try to get the knockdown, and then we start our Oki pressure. Like, that's the reward you get for good defense and unity. Yes. Like, yeah. you know, I actually, I, I get it. You know, I think in Kido Batiste is a matchup that you would normally, like, think on paper wouldn't be that good. But it was tend to be pretty safe actually in the previous versions of the game, and now having access to things like six FF, which can yeah. deal with a lot of the mid-screen pressure that Batista normally wants, it's a very, very useful oh, no. tool. Yeah, I mean, Enkido has only been getting better and better. I think it's certainly well deserved because this character 
you know, definitely one of those uh, that needed to kind of up their ante when it came to the rest of the cast, right? Like, still strong within his own right, but needed that extra little touch to actually come over the finish line to contend with some of the stronger characters. Like, Batista, right? This setup is actually going to be tough for Defiant here. We'll see what the next interaction is going to be with Throw. Nice assault, though, from Lunar. Yeah, expecting them to just go for the, the throw set right there to keep it safe with gem debt, but Lunar was trying to get as much advantage as they possibly could right here. 6SF coming back down. Ooh. That raw VO may not have been exactly what they were looking for right there. Juicy pick up at the beam, though. Another gem detonation. IW not killing quite yet, but the situation is looking dire. I do like the change that you can challenge out on gems now with uh, your buttons there, being able to shut those down. Um, but you got to be cautious on that because then you're still trying to um, put a button out on top of something that, you know, Batista's likely looking for to begin with anyway. Yeah, one thing I, I, I want to really point on is that that uh, like air jump set that you saw Luna going for, and you've been kind of seeing him try to go for it again. It's actually really, really good versus Nikidu because he does stand a little bit taller, so he's actually going to get hit by it sometimes on those sure. rock trees. Oh! Great whoa. use of six Yeah. Nice. Good blocks here from Lunar. But here's the fear, right? Flash kick from Batista. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> hey, look at that. Yeah, and that's that's the scary part with Enkidu, right? He's a character that really relies on these big counter hits uh, and, like, getting that extra Havoc damage. So trying to create those stagger windows versus someone with a four-frame flash kick can be very scary, but the rising tackle will connect. And they uh, should get some good good reward off this. Yeah, 4K. Ooh. There, and stagger does open up Lunar. Should be able to take that round. Yeah, utilizing that people's elbow, the 2B to its fullest effect right there. One of like the stronger pokes, especially in this match, because it is like slightly anti airy so if they're trying to short hop, it can sometimes cut them out of it. Interesting, but that low shield is also interesting. If you're on the side of Lunar right there, finding that big grid break, gonna be able to get four, uh, almost 4K, no gem sets. Yeah, making a few threats here with the 5A. Nice navigation over the fireball here from Lunar, and yes, finding the threat here. Got to get the cross on your follow-up too. Nice, Defiant really gonna have a spectacular time in this corner with CS to boot. Keeping it steady right now. Lunar just recognizing all the mids, trying to find an opportunity to challenge. Good block on the charge 5C, but that 2-2C gonna come keep them plus and throw tech to take their turn back. Jeez, that Celestial giving so many resources there, but it kind of goes to waste a little bit because it overspends on the meter bar that we already have. We're on full at 200. You did save yourself from an unsafe scenario, but Defiant stood strong in defense until we got this grip break. Lunar looking solid with this IW availability if we want to go CBO. Oh, goes for gem set. Yeah, because they're looking for situations like that where you, even if they throw tech out, you pop that gem, you maintain that you're safe. It's a very, very like advantageous situation for All the right. Batista player. All right, so back into it. Lunar going up a game. Yeah. And Defiant, you know, recognizing like, hey, I want to I, I wanna keep with this. This is the pick I want to make into Batista. So to see if they can fully capitalize on it. Gem is the threat here. Nice catch. Oh, my God. Yeah, getting the, the, the back hit of that 6FF and then still being able to keep them into the right corner that you were looking for. Nice. Got the parry. Yeah, it's still able to space them out to keep them safe, but they're not after that parry right there. Mm -mm. Nice. Force function. Got the ant here. Smart steer ender here to get the corner carry. Yeah, you're seeing Lunar go for a lot of these like uh, like up floats right there. And I think like Defiant recognized that really early we saw, but it's still able to keep it up. Uh, really utilizing that good force function out from Enkidu. So shield on the flying JC. Interesting choice on the CS right there. I think we're still going to be locked in the block with Fireball anyways. Oh my goodness. Yeah, 6FF a couple times there. We'll go punish. But, like, it's it's a very good tool, right? And I think in this match especially. Yeah. But you always have to remember, that's giving your opponent grid. Mm -hmm. It's slowly going to be powering them up. And you've been seeing it that when Lunar's getting the cycle, they're making great use out of it. Even if they're not spending the meter, just being able to use that CS to keep themselves safe. Yeah, and this is the, the tough matchup here, right? You have to chase down uh, a health lead Batista with no fireball. You have to try to build up grid so you can get CS opportunity. And look at that. The EX fireball finish. Cashing and jumping here. Lunar with 
the match point to start right now. Yeah, you you d as the Inkido, you can have potential with using like two three six C to try to like capitalize on some hits, but you've been seeing that Defiance hasn't been able to like get that meter working in those situations because they're needing to spend it on two two C and other tools just to keep that damage up. Oh no, punish though, a little bit too far away. Yeah, I think they were expecting uh, like an A flash kick right there, so they would EX cancel out of it, but they will find the damage right here with this confirm. Yeah, 360C Ender. Stagger Force Function still able to get the CS, thank goodness. Oh, C no the deep shot. assault. Yeah, 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 the deep assault JC. Able to connect right at the very end. Flashes of the King of Fighters right there with those uh, hyper hops. I mean, there's that in the fact that you're going up against a charged character who already mm. has a charge on flash kick and you assaulted without any threat of that flash kick. No, no, nothing from Lunar. Knocked down. Keeps that combo. <laughs> I say keeps the combo long enough just to make sure that, that all that VO is completely stripped from them and B Drill finally coming out. Don't hate, we got 50 50s as well as good strike throw. We've got the corner carry here from Defiant. Side swap here, nice charge, pick up the OTG. I like that, go for the, the, the second hit ender, just get the good knockdown so you can quickly reset into another up kick route. So, look serious follow up into the IW. No height on that, just trying to respect the reversal opportunity. Hyper beeped. That sucks. <laughs> it is what it is, just like that 6FF is what it is, and Defiant taking game number two. Okay, okay. I do respect right after that force function, though, to just CS and wait and see, because that could have been that reversal opportunity from uh, mm -hmm. Lunar, right? Just because you did get that gap. And that's the fear that I was talking about in the first game, in this matchup in particular. Like, Enkidu gets so much off of that stagger pressure, kind of required to do it to open up the opponent, but you're working against the fear of when is my opponent going to flash kick? It's not a matter if, it's just a matter of when against Batista. Yeah. Fortunately, Enkidu is a character that actually gets to play like a pretty safe game versus the flash kick, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. it's good. And it's, it's just a, a flash kick is a flash kick, right? It's, it's yeah. going to do exactly what it needs to do. But he gets to stay spaced out at a lot of really good ranges, especially now with 6FF able to like, like catch it at some of those times. It can be very beneficial. Oh, my God. What a two-way challenge. Jesus. Yeah, it was really smart from Lunar right there to recognize, like, hey, you just have been, like, always opening a little bit of a longer gap right there, so I'm going to now take advantage of it. I'm going to keep this cycle going in my favor. I'm going to keep this pressure up with you in the corner, but Defiance is not IVO out. Yeah, I agree with that VO there. That's been really aggressive to deal with. Nice roll through with the 3D. Yeah, you always want to be careful with that. If they if they do end up blocking it, like, the Enkidu is actually plus, so they can get a lot of advantage off of it. So good recognition to roll it. Nice 5A anti-air right there. Let's look up the pressure forward. Nice hop. Nothing. I knew it. I knew it. I was like, come on. Matisse is doing nothing in the corners. Don't don't make him move. But you have to do key. You ain't got nothing to threaten her with but your fist. Yeah, and you even saw ready for that flash kick to come out to Lunar's like, okay, I know you're ready. We're going to go A flash kick, get that CS cancel out of it, keep your turn back. And now gem sets are coming up, orbs are coming down, everything in the kitchen sink being used, but that force function going to connect once again. And it might go off this one. No, just 360C, okay. More stagger, and once again, you saw the stance. We assumed the stance just in case, but still... Was able to steal it away with a little victory here. Yeah, it, it, being able to now recognize, like, oh, you want to press after these situations? Okay, I'm just going to go press parry. And that's the dangerous situation. Once they're in your head of, like, I know when you're going to press, so I'm going to just start parrying you. It always makes you second guess your decisions, which you never want to do versus the impeding player. Oh, absolutely not. Oh, okay. All right. The, the charge did hit. It seemed weird. I didn't see the flash of the hit quite there, but we got it. Solid Ender, 6FF, trying to bait out that delayed flash kick, but Lunar just stays cautious, but they won't stay cautious for long as they get clipped one last time. Defiant taking it 2-1. Yeah, that 6 force function here going to cross Defiant across the finish line here into winner's final. Players are going to try to download each other here in our next match. Gravy Jones versus Whoa. Toast. Yeah, Gravy Jones are going to get caught by the assault from Toast here. It's a very risky start, but did pay off in spades. 
Yeah, you see a lot of Merkavas like to go for 2B round start versus hide, especially. So I do like that as a, just a check to, you know, say, hey, don't do that. We're going to play normal. We're playing real under night. And we're playing some grid break throws right here. 2 2 A getting a good counter hit as well. Going to give him some very, very nice damage here. Oh my goodness, absolutely. And the grid break to boot on top of it. So you got that beautiful chain shift to win the cycle with almost no grid available to you. Nice shielding. Baby Jones with the smart seer ender. Yeah, and didn't didn't get a chance to do any kind of worms. Nice backdash out of the force function right there. Good shield. Still respecting the turn that is Gravy Jones, but we got the OTG pickup. Yeah, I think right now Toast is really looking to get that cycle, but they're unfortunately not going to see it right here as they get the worm set in the full oh. charge, and then the little buddies come from downtown, but doesn't kill just yet. That was very fortunate drop there. The 2B not uh, completely getting a follow through from Gravy Jones. Now Toast with a single hope and a prayer tries to dash in. Does succeed. Jesus. Yeah, you always have to be very careful in those situations. 2-2-A and 2-2-B hit so high up. And like a lot of Merkavas will try to go for a cheeky flight to try to open them up. And it just catches you out like that. Jump A there from Toast. No confirmed though. Full screen scenario, building up that grid. Dash C with another charge C. Yeah, allowing that grid to build up over on Gravy Jones' side. Gonna be able to hit Celestial unless you can find an opportunity to snatch that grid open, but it's not gonna happen. You're finding a route into Celestial. Damage boost here, resource boost opportunity. You're looking at so much meter potential right here. Gonna cash it out right there, but we'll just spend it on a grid for us to stay positive. Yeah, that was actually a very good spend right there because you're already gonna overspend on the rebuild from your CS. You can still come out on top and have a defensive option for you. 2B, good block. Yeah, good shields, but no punish on the, the 63C. It's always a little bit hard. Yeah, the range it pushes you out makes it kind of iffy to really challenge reliably, depending upon your character. Mm -hmm. Nice blocks on all these overheads coming through, but Toasted, I think, is really looking for that next big hit to try to close it out. Won't get gold thrown here, but they will start with a throw of their own. <laughs> Chicago Butters start? Okay, there we go. Nice two-way interrupt. Okay, good throw. Not getting max damage off of it, though. Oh, very fortunate jump out there if it would have been uh, you know, the hand going angled down, then you would have got caught by dash C potentially. And now I think both players have recognized, oh, we have 10 seconds left. And this is where, <laughs> like, normally you would just allow your opponent to come and start pressuring you, but the amount of chip damage that a hide can bring to the table, it's so, so scary, especially these last confirms to take no the life way. lead at the very end. You had it all. <laughs> it's so, it's... Oh, that always hurts. Just being like, you have control for that entire time. In the last two seconds, the player, you know, they unlock that that seventh sense to just find your exact opening. I do love that you recognize too the, the moment of panic when you both realize the the ten second mark. Oh crap! And then you have to adjust yeah. almost immediately on the fly. Of like, wait, mm -hmm. I have the life lead. I need to pull back and not pull up these big wrists. And Toast goes, Oh crap! I need to make sure I get this hit. Yeah. We'll have to see early Celestial over for Gravy Jones the amount of force function used from Toast. Like I said, uh, in one of their previous matches, like Toast really likes to use that force function, yeah. but it does put you at a cost. It's very real if you use it too much. Worm set up here. Oh, no. Calls out the bail off. Yeah, it's a scary situation there. You don't want to go for your DP, but you get that advantage with Veil off here. So you try to strip away the uh, grip meter just a little bit there. It doesn't grip break like it used to, right? But at least try to return the favor and gain advantage on the next cycle. Now you've seen them just try to you know gain any kind of advantage to stay alive, but it's not working out for them as they take the Sea Worm follow-up throw. Oh, I love that that dash back right there in the air trying to bait out a DP and then immediately coming in with the low once you realize they're not going to respect that. Yeah, jump C opener here, off the assault rather, from Gravy Jones. And now Worm Oki one more time. And look at that, on defense, Toast just takes all the Worm Oki. That's, I tried almost every option I have in my arsenal to try to get out of this setup. I'm not going to put myself at any more risk than I've already done. But it's all for naught. A perfect round there for Gravy Jones. We're up one all in the set now. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, and this you know really can go either way. Like we've we've been seeing these players go back and forth halfway between these rounds. So mm-hmm. uh, I think you're gonna be looking at like if you're if you're on Team Gravy Jones, right? Or if you are Gravy Jones, you're looking at like okay, how can I reduce the amount of like wild situations that Toast is bringing to the table with all of these like deep assaults, these bigger callouts? Can you play a little bit more passively, try to punish them, and then on Toast, and it's like how can I do something so insane that they don't know how to deal with it? Yeah, and I wonder how much of that hesitation is just from the meters set up there. If you notice, Gravy Jones opting for Worm Oki, and that's purposeful because then it kind of removes the ADP opportunity for Hyde, so Hyde has to commit to something a little riskier to try to get out of those setups, or we just go with an excellent media situation there from Gravy where there's no DPing out. Yeah, but right now Toast recognized them immediately, like, you know, once again, having that patience, having that little bit of a delay and being like, okay, yep. I can speed. I can get out of here. It's my time to take nice control. Throw. Yeah, We'll get the throw combo in the corner as well. Oh, the Assault A whiffs entirely, but we turn around just in the nick of time for a DP and a perfect round. Really good use of that chain shift as well, just yes. to guarantee it's like, hey, I got to stop you, and then I got to be built right at that 100 meter for this next round. Ooh. Black goes in the cornerback series here. And another great throw. You know, that, I mean, that is potential with Hyde, right? Like, his strike mm-hmm. throw is very, very good with that yeah. high chip, point especially. Uh, but Gravy Jones is just, like, very not ready for it. But it's also willing to take it, which is, you know, kind of a good mindset to have. Oh, try to get the air fireball set up there. A little pogo hop. Not going to work out, though. Grid Thrust does take all of your grid away at the cost of 100 meter, though, to get out of that pressure situation. But we'll still, you know, get the cycle back. Jeez. All right, nice carry here. Yeah, got the cycle, got Celestial. Tons of work, calls out the green shield. And that's a great opportunity for Gravy Jones to keep up the pressure. Overhead does get blocked. Yo, the big hands! They were a reaching. Yeah, talk to the hands indeed, as you're going to get brought all the way down. Should be able to kill with the CBO ender right here into that little INW now tied up. This is anyone's game. Fireball goes full screen one more time. Press for the hit grab, nothing doing. And I like this, just playing very cautious with those dash blocks, not wanting to give like too much information at the early stages of these rounds so you can get big hits like that 6 6 Yes. Down. Oh, the low 2C does open up here. Yeah, just 5AB, Smart Steer Ender into the IW, get that extra damage and toast. Taking it with an almost perfect in that second almost. game. Only like only like 78 damage off that health bar. Operation coming back up against Slush Rush Sweep. I feel like that's got to be a new puzzle fighter that's coming out, Slush Rush Sweep. Versus the Blue Reverberation. Yeah, that's that's a... It's a the, the newest title in the uh, in the Super Puzzle Fighter series. My goodness. But here we have the strongest boss character of all time, or just the strongest boss character of today. And right now, Slushro Sweep is making good work of a lot of just the basic Hilda game plan, using that 6-6-C, trying to capitalize, but a good roll is going to give the blue reverberation the pressure they need. Okay, already the red miss. Wasn't we'll able to quite challenge what we were looking for. Reverberation was trying to take advantage of that trade. Almost could have. Slush finds an opening here, but no CS dropping out a little bit too far. And that's just unfortunate Hilda things right there. <laughs> yeah, just the, you know the not not finishing your plate and then them having CS to be able to get the full punish. A good roll out of that pressure though from Slush for sweep using that guard thrust to keep themselves safe. But the Ooh. C teleport should yeah. almost close it out. We're just about there, uh, but at a full screen scenario, no meter of it. Oh wait, yeah, that's right. The practical hit scan fireball here. It is something you have to be worried about because normally you can like try to find things that will like projectile in your way through it, but Hilda doesn't have a lot of those and a lot of her projectile or things that you think are projectiles are actually object property. So there's, you, there's sometimes those situations don't work out into your favor. And right now the blue reverberation trying to make that work. Well, Slush does have the Celestial. Goes from CS there to push away. Now you're still locked in the corner, though. Not quite what we're looking for. The guard thrust helps. Able to call the Roomba out during that as well, so they will get a quick overhead, but couldn't find a full conversion. So Blue Reverberation's going to find another good confirm. 
Yeah, blue with the chase down here and basically a cross under the normal attempt there from Slush. All right, another tech here, actually, so good there. Oh, no. I like that. No. That was so scary. That could have been way worse than what it was because that was a really good 3D right in the face of Slush, but it wasn't a button start. It was just flash kick to keep that a vulnerability. Oh. I like that use of Roomba right there. We've been seeing so many roll attempts out from Blue Reverberation, and Slush Rush is like, "Oh, you're just gonna do that? Fine. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pop that. We're gonna, we're gonna play some normal games." But the fireballs from the upper left corner of the screen not gonna allow him. Blue Reverberation taking game number one. Yeah, Blue really kind of keeping it close against Slush with these teleports. It does help out tremendously. I think it's just difficult to lock down Kuan with a character like Hilda because those further normals kind of linger for quite some time and it gives opportunity for Kuan to make those teleports. Ooh, float for float and Slush coming out on top of theirs. Yeah, I really like that use of that that uh, that sparks your ender right there because they're finding that exact last hit where it's like, oh, I can't get a big conversion. I'm just going to get Grim instead. Uh, unfortunately, Blue Reverberation able to just quickly close the gap and take make sure all that grid goes away. Oh, we get called up at the guard thrust there. Uh, trying to make a fancy jump over on uh, Slosh, but Blue Reverberation with the chain shift able to extend the combo just a bit further. Pinned up. Here's a gloom for you with the teleport to bring you between the two. Yeah, the, the, there was a very like safe gloom that normally see a lot of Hilda's back off of, but Slush Rush didn't want that. And now Blue Reverberation's like, oh, you want to stay close? Fine, we can stay close. Ooh. Say hello to this corner. Immediate fireball round start. Uh, one right back at you, but with meter this time. That was with conviction here. Yo. <laughs> These 6C22As have been working so well. Oh, but a good teleport out. Say no, thank you. Mm -hmm. CS steals the turn one more time. No contending with that beam there. But the 3D works out to get you out of the corner. Mm -hmm. Gotta be careful. That was only the A fireball there from Blue. Oh, we still got the C coming through. Yeah, and I think you're seeing that right there. You're trying to find the, the delay on the 2-2-B two, two to open them up with that pressure. It's not going to work so far. No glue mix. FFA not going to open them up either because they'll just stay calm right there. Press that 5-C and now be able to get the party started. Ring. No flight, just strike throw. Yeah, it's a hard to guess situation right there. Your back is up against the, you know, the Oki set up from blue. And if you walk backwards, well, you're going to be caught in block stun. And that's kind of difficult to deal with. It might have been a teleport opportunity, which is what we saw initially from Slush, which is set up the glue on one side, go for teleport to catch you blocking specifically glue on the players Hilda. try to play because he is just so good at that strike throw game i think better than all what a lot of people expected so he can really make that work Oof. but it can be hard to deal with these max range five c's that stars currently looking at i'm very curious to see how often we'll see the armor stance we see a lot of players kind of forget that that is the property that sarugi has and get called out for it and there it is right the stance for sarugi to kind of carry on with the shield and corner carry even up against Gordo. Gordo with a lot of, you know, mid threats going to get armored up, but, you know, just have the low with 3C, right? So there's the 3C start. Yeah, and that's the danger that you're looking at. It's like, okay, if I can just react to them uh, trying to go for the force function stance with the 3C, you can get some advantage off of it. But then the Shurugi can go for a charge 2C, which is a fully armored low. And it's, it's always a very scary situation, but here we go. Force function 6A going to connect right at the beginning here. Nice. Bring it down. Another charge. Still Sarugi's turn. Not quite. Maybe Grim Reaper would have worked out here, but that's a risk in and of itself, but you have meter available to you. It would have been a uh, Grim Reaper to go for there. Ooh! All right, Ooh. back throw! Yeah, yeah, this is a great start right here. Gonna be able to get that uh -oh. extra damage. Tries to go for the delay JB, but Big Black taking their turn. The mortal slide there, dash up with throw, a little bit too far there. Big Black able to cover it. Yeah, rare opportunity of whiff throw not being pl plus. Big Black already ready for the dash throw afterwards. That's the safe mid into the quick little follow up right there. Star was trying to challenge, but unfortunately, board buttons are too slow for that. See us in though. Gonna, you know, just quick grab. Let me get the corner back. Oh, oh you were almost right. 
Nice. Here, chain shift. Nothing quite from star underscore. Not taking the bait, but that one stood up. I should just press a button through there. So big counter hit opportunity for Big Black. Yeah, it's big enough that it'll just guarantee the round right there. <laughs> big Black up 1-0. So careful with those counter hits. So much follow up potential there for uh, Sarugi, but going right back into it again. Yeah. You know, Star, Star, like, I think a big thing was Star was trying to challenge a lot of those, like, pressure sequences, but instead, yeah. they need to find situations like that where they can space out, force Big Black to whip something, and get big reward for it. Yeah, I almost feel like trying to tell a Gordo player to kind of slow down and be a little patient is very difficult to do because they want to be very aggro. For whatever reason right it just seems like that is the case like this scenario great be as aggro as you want to be because you've earned this position there's nothing that the opponent can do because there's no meter there you don't have cs available to you 3d can be an option but the stagger pressure makes it very difficult here for big black to get out of this corner 2a though yeah i guess the shield though off the uh the the follow-up right there so not gonna be able to get anything big crazy in star instead gonna capitalize on that take that round looking very different than the previous one where i think big black had a very like just good read on everything that star was trying to do but doesn't look like the case anymore oh geez fell into that after the assault and yeah absolutely get that pick up here that's a VC launcher in there right for Oh, good. Yeah, good recognition. Not getting TRM to right there with the, the command grab. Or he grabbed it. Mm -hmm. No follow up. And so no punish as well as Big Black was waiting for that. But they will find the early punish on that IW right here. Not going to get hit by that second. Yeah, but can't finish your plate. <laughs> but you have all these resources. I mean, come on. Almost 200 meter, a CS available to you. Massive life lead. It's a tall order. Oh, no. The cross up. Maybe I spoke too soon. I'm sorry, Big Black. Has to get out of dodge there. A little bit too close for comfort on this pressure. Assault Ooh. wisp, but we got the Asim. Ooh, Asim number two. Do it again. Do it again. No, not ready for not ready to punish that green shield. And Big Black will be able to punish with that quick 2A check right there. I think we wanted to, right? It was the alert in your brain that said, that's a green shield. Throw that right now. And yep. you just did not have the input to do it. You were already caught and recover your frames and that give big black the opportunity to go for the challenge oh nice block of the cross up very tricky stuff there for big black yeah you a big black was trying to like open him up but star was just staying very very solid on that defense still finding all these opportunities just get this extra damage where you can two a's checking right there Good tech out of the gold throw. Not getting blown up this time in a nice 2A of uh, for Star right there. Yeah. Right. Nice block on the assault. So got the Asim. Slides 3C. Are you kidding me? Was Asim again? And this time normal throw. No need to be a Sim. So much being available here for Star underscore. Nice. Yeah. No, Stop it. it. Stop it. No! Do it again. See you, Sim. Oh, no, just backing out now, playing that normal pressure. <gasps> gets jumped over as the dash under the assault right there. So now Big Black gets control of the corner. Wow, big jump A there. Stagger. Nice. Mortal Slide. It's still Star's turn. EX Mortal Slide steals it away. One all yep. in the set. Using those plus frames, get that quick standing low with the 5A star, you know, showing signs of life now. It'll be interesting to see how Big Black uh, wants to change their game plan. I think one thing that I haven't seen is they haven't gone for 236C at all. Uh, you know, just being like that invuln forward moving plus on block tool. Uh, right. You know, it's, uh, essentially a bionic arm. And you can get <laughs> a lot of use out of it, but currently nothing's been uh, coming out just yet. Nice. Oh my god. Wait, 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 wait. We got the assault, but a 3C, or not 3C, sorry, 2C pick up there? Yep, yep. And I think that's something that you're going to be seeing uh, a lot more from Star through this, as the, if they do try to go for the uh, the overhead uh, punish off of the, the stance follow up, 2C is able to blow that up as well. But so is these double B Sims into C Grim Reaper. Star now, match point. Slide into the DMs, bring on the ground pound, and still guard, guarding with shield here and able to get enough of a backdash to avoid the throw. 
you start. Okay. Yeah, finding that max tip range of that two, being able to find a good confirm off of it as well. Tried to jump over, but Big Black just wanted to back tech out, saying, no, we got to keep the side because I'm bringing you back to this corner. Say hello to the West Coast over here. But CSM going to punish that attempt right there with the Red Mist to death. Pest leader slides in. A sim to finish. He's deep, he's out. Nah, I don't respect it. <laughs> I have a giant shield. What do I need to respect? I'm going to block it. Psych! Sometimes you have nail. to respect the rusty nail. That's what you got to respect right there, Sarugi. PG name of a match, Lunar versus the Blue Reverberation. Coming up here is our next match in Loser's Quarters. What? It's it's like the Great Calamity. It was the Blue Reverberation. Yeah, yeah. So it's a sequel to, what is it, Lunar like, Second Story? Oh, it's... <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. What, what do we got? Lunar Lunar 3 now? Yeah, only do Lunar, three, L Lunar 3 versus the Blue Reverberation, and right now Lunar's looking strong, looking like the protagonist in this story uh, with okay. a lot of these really good early hits against the Blue Reverberation, but now finally making a comeback. Yeah. Got that full screen presence. Who is the better zoner between these two? Oh, oh, no, not a 3D into destruction here from Blue. And now we're going to see just get the rings. Oh, no ring set right there, but we'll get a quick little overhead after that assault. No flash kick coming in just yet. But a flash kick of Reverberation's own to close out that first round. Okay, we take those. I mean, yeah, it was surprising to not see ring set up there because the threat of flash kick is so terrifying to deal with here. But I guess Blue already knew the uh, circumstances here. It was going to maintain that control in the corner. Lunar trying to set things up for themselves here. Oh, yeah. Vortex. Good stuff, though, for Blue. Uh, C Tornado not going to be able to fully blow them up for it as they're not close enough to get the uh, guaranteed air unblockable. But a B Drill will confirm after this right here, showing that, uh, you know, Batista not as much of a zoner in this version of the game, looking more towards that set play mix of opportunities. Right. Yeah, I almost feel like that's how Batista players generally played in the previous version of the game. <laughs> like, yes, she was very strong as a zoner and. Uh, had a lot of great tools to make your life miserable on that approach, but she could very much turn that switch, set up Gem Oki, and just continue pressuring with tons of explosivity there. Oh, wow. And that's why they've uh, they've definitely doubled down with that version of the character in this game with all the changes made and whatnot. Nice C Teleport right there. That great bird. So C Teleport. Oh, see, um, okay. I wasn't sure if C, because not all C moves are like technically considered air unblockable. There's like weird situations. And mm -hmm. we saw Lunar did actually get input the air shield to try to block it. But it uh, when it's the first hit of it on the ground is air unblockable. So you still get blown up with that air shield. Okay. Good to know. That's knowledge for the future that I think definitely think Lunar will take forward into these sets, seeing if that comes through, knowing that, okay, I can't block it. I got to get around it. There slides in with the knockdown as well. Oh, ankles are broken. You can hear the sneakers being flipped off the feet here. Out on the court, that is owned by Blue right now. Yeah, looking very, very dominant after that first round. It was looking like, you know, Lunar was looking very strong, but Blue Reverberation not letting anything get past them right now. Finally getting those, uh, those B rings to connect, looking like a medium onion ring throughout all the Oki situations. But now Lunar trying to do whatever they can to get a, uh, an opportunity to open them up. It's not working out. Okay, the extra damage here. Bring it right back down for Oki. And a moment of pause there to make sure we could, I mean, we already had so much in the tank there for grid, but we still got that grid cycle either way. Maybe we wanted to make sure we could try to stretch over into Celestial, but either way, we're putting on a world of hurt again with this setup. Oh, and you get the throw right there, so you actually gain more grid at the very end to get, to get CS once again. But Lunar does opt for the VO to make sure that that cycle is stripped from you and now thrown of their own. <laughs> the shield game is strong. I mean, Blue doesn't even come in at all, so we're going to wait for Lunar to try to make the mistake where we have the opportunity to jab out because there's very little health on the side. Lunar, no, the assault! Maybe thought the teleport was going to come through? Yeah, I... I definitely like the assault there, right? Like, 
if unless they're on point with their flash kicks, which we haven't really seen Blue Reverberation use flash kick super defensively. Mm -hmm. So unless they're like very on point with it, it can be uh, pretty advantageous to get that jump in right there. Riddle me this, who's winning the cycle? It's Riddle, but you know, Griddle is what you see. They didn't really like, think that one through. <laughs> We gotta talk to Komona. Hey, we gotta put breakfast in this game. <laughs> All right, but early starts right now from Gravy Jones over here. Currently trying to find more opportunities to open Star up. Rusty Nail, yo. That's a brave Rusty Nail up against Merkava. Like, I don't know about that one, Chief. One hit grab away and Star underscore could be close in the gap. Oh, too far, but that's okay. Star finally making a lot of work coming right now. Stagger. Ooh. All right, jump C does get blocked here. Good shields. But unfortunately, 2A run up from Star underscore. And Lunar, thank you so much for the raid. Greatly appreciate it. Yep, yep. Congrats on your two top eights tonight, MTNS. Oh, jeez. More shields, guard Good. thrust out. I'm definitely liking more and more of this use of a uh, guard thrust that's currently happening through the players as a whole. It's definitely something that wasn't yeah. revealed uh, like too much in the early stages of the game, but now it's working right. out great. But unfortunately, Star was still able to capitalize that end of that first round. I almost feel like it was just residual information of guard thrust being so expensive in the previous version of the game. And now it's a little, we're seeing more and more of it because it's not as risky to spend. You're not losing as much as you did previously. Yeah. And I think the players who are really making good use of it right now are the ones that you're seeing consistently do well. That's why I think you're seeing Gravy Jones make it like this far into the ground. Mm -hmm. And also looking super, super confident right here. Gets that Sea Worm Ender, but nice back tech out of the uh, Flight Oak. He just has to hold the worms here. Ooh, new route. Let's go with the 6-6-F-F. Going to do great damage right here. I did like that use of 2C to just get out of the worm situation from the star because it always forgets to low. So it definitely catches a lot of people out on the pressure sequences. Stand block here on the JC. And Big Black, thank you for the raid. Much appreciated here. And thank you so much for joining the bracket tonight. Yeah. All right, now you got to take a look at the two people that knocked you out play to see who makes it further. Star Dang. taking game number one. I'm calling an ambulance real quick for that one. Hold on. <laughs> Not for me. Uh, all right, that's Star up 1-0 against Gravy Jones right now. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm trying to think like from the perspective of Gravy Jones, like, is there anything that like drastically needs to be adjusted? And it's not. I think just Star is playing very, very defensively and then finding mm -hmm. that right opportunity to press exactly when it's like, oh, I found your opening and right. taking full priority of the situation when that comes up and star in classic gordo fashion just making up for the small openings that are available like oh did i have to drop this or you know maybe i overextended here that's okay i have another quick follow-up that's going to be advantageous for me whether that's a quick grim reaper after dropping the uh you know, stand c Ooh, ran into it your fault no hit grab for you though nice jump in off the assault yeah, getting that late hit of JB right there is a super, super useful tool that I think Gord uh, is uh, can be a little undervalued in this matchup sometimes because it will just give you these further reach that you need right now. But currently, we're reaching into your chest with all these grabs coming out. Does it 200 meters? So potentially it does. Does this kill? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. It does indeed. <laughs> I was like, I, I saw that. I saw the meter. I'm like, oh no, is there, are they dead? Are they dead? You could be living here, right? But we are in uni two. It's double the damage. That's what the two is for. <laughs> two, that's how many touches you need to win a game right here. Because Gravy Jones found the first one that they're looking for. We'll see here, though. All right, nice. DX Worm set up. Goes for flight. Nice block yeah. on the 4B. Yeah, I like that CS try to see what they're going for off their flight mix, but... Gravy Jones, I think, was prepared for that and did, uh, did some delay pressure right there. A lot of the worms coming to do a little bit of the work in the beginning. Good. Ow, but it's not going to work. Those worms were coming in, checking those ankles. All the homies helped me out. That's great. Yeah. That's why I plant the worms. Yeah, that's, that's a fair. This is a, this is a 4v1. 
Where's the, where, where's the ref? Where's the ref? Good 2 3 6 C. We have the combo? We do. They don't pay the ref enough for this type of fight. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you got this monster oh. showing up. What an assault. Oh my goodness. Look, if a dog can play basketball, a void can play basketball. That's all I'm saying. You know. Light OQ no work. Rules. In, no yeah, there's no the rules. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you're, you're seeing Gravy Jones now try to like piece out that green shield right there. But still finding these throw opportunities. Gonna get the 6 6 to connect off the, the 6 throw right there. Mm -hmm. oh and another one. But you're fine. You know, you've got health to spare. You can afford to take the throw. But it's slowly gonna add up again and again and again. Especially oh. when you get grid broken like that. 200 meter on deck into the IOX. Star X underscore. Should be closing it out. But no promises until I see that defeat him. Yep. Yes, the 2-2-8 two, two, grip break is tragic here. A lot of people realized if you can just play fundamentally sound, Waldstein can carry you super, super far in this game with having good system mechanic control. And if someone has good system mechanic control, it's defined. Yeah, it, it definitely is. I mean, honestly, I, at this point, I have to ask if Define is just listening to the commentary because Define just say, you want to bet? Like, I'm going to play Waldstein now. That's what it is. Well, I, you know, I think I think Defiant has a little bit of a might have something to prove because they were the random select king for the longest time, but they kind of you know they settled down. They they put that ring on that finger with that the Laundrecki and that carbine, but right, right. Now we're now now we're seeing everything in the kitchen sink just like we used to. But Toast is showing that hey, this is what character mastery can do. This is what a sing all, a thousand hours on a single hide can look like. Yeah, and that can sometimes really turn the tide. I mean, it, of course, hours put into a game can certainly spread across the cast, and Toast mm -hmm. finding that character specialization it can also mean quite a bit up against a player like Defiant. We'll see, though. This is a big Hail Mary of a shot if I ever saw one against a Waldstein, though. That's a big risk. Yeah, the height, especially someone who gets to play a little bit safer versus Wald, as your buttons can tend to cover similar ranges while being very, very quick and providing that chip should they choose to block it. But Defiant is showing like, hey, I just got to play calm and collected. Now you got to hold all of this. No throw on the roll attempt right there. But Toast will get a throw of their own after it. Nice DP under. Yo, already in the sky, but it's okay. We got the barrage. Charge clamp will block on shield. Nice. Yeah, nice shield on the 2-2-A right there, being able to actually punish the, uh, the jumping attempts. Nice on the staggers, but not the next one here. The follow-up does find the mark here for Toast. We do have 100 meter available. We do have IW available. Yeah, always cash out. And this is one thing I really like about Toast. They're really not afraid. Oh, I didn't even realize that one. I'm sorry, did that say four matches? Uh, I missed, this is I missed this it. is this is this is Defiance now fifth game on Waldstein. <laughs> at least, at least online, right on this account. Because I I, I don't think they have another account. I don't I, I don't I don't think they play this on PlayStation. Okay, okay. I think they're just playing on PC now. Oh, jeez, nice anti here though. Orbital. Oh, um, it had to have been Orbital EX Orbital startup there that got blown up. Yeah, I, I think it was it was uh, it was EX Fireball right there. But that Power Geyser is the new tool, the talk of the town that you're yes. seeing Walls really get a lot of use out of. As it is a very very like effective tool at that full screen range where normally Walls had to just like slow jump their way in. Jumping. Good back tech there, a little bit too late in the follow up here. Doesn't matter. Defiant still able to find the hit. Yeah, just going for overhead swipe into EX overhead swipe right there. Playing very, very confident in their game plan right nice. now. Clap not going to connect, so the 6-6-C six, six yeah. will punish. Yeah, that was a great whip punish right there from Toast. Excellent understanding of the range that you can be effective at. Tried to cancel into the EX fireball, but that fail off came through in the clutch for Defiant. Yeah, there's just a slight little delay to it. Body Splash CS, the classic. The Waldstein staple that you've been seeing since the beginning, and now finding more opportunities to jump in. Good delay tech gets out of the, the throw situation, so just had to hold the strike. 2 8 delay, let's go for the cross through. There, dash C is still gonna get blocked here. And no matter how much you get staggered on, Defiant is stoic on defense, but still gonna get tossed up by Toast. 
damage and that damage is going. One more grid break on the stand shield right there with the quick little low check, and that's gonna be Toast tying up the second round. Good. Remember, this is our winner's finals. It is three out of five, so we do have a little bit of time to find. Could potentially at any point switch and uh, you know, bring out a bring out a fourth character. Bro. Nice trade. Takes advantage of the grid cycle, but now you got to try to close the gap against this ground pound here from Defiant. Nice double Defiant, jump. Yeah, found the jump in the air assault right there to be able to get out of the power geyser, which is, it's a, I totally thought it was going to clip as well, but showing the recognition of the ranges. See Fireball to take their turn again and again, but not able to finish the throw combo. So careful. Good patience on the shield. I like the lingering charge there from Defiant because if Toast would have opened up at the wrong time, it would have been disastrous. Nice block on the Veil off, but no, the 2-8 doesn't find the mark. Yeah, so we'll just spend all that VO meter on that grid thrust right there. Keep themselves safe. But now gain the cycle. Ooh. Oh, power guys. Their CS going to connect, but no combo. Nice. Attempt from Defiant here, recognizing the shield, but Toast able to recover just in the nick of time. Good corner carry from Toast. Oh, we have 360 right there. Toast, you know, able to take their turn back as uh, Defiant used the CS to make themselves safe. We should be able to kill right here. No, not on the feeder. Oh, we thought we'd get the punish on the Veil Off. That's two for two on Veil Off punishes that Toast was not able to find. But at the very least, we had the patience before going full bore up against defiant here yeah and they're they're locking it in they're wanting to make sure that waldstein is able to take those rounds where they can so let's see if toast can clean up the 3-0 or if uh, defiant can make the make the comeback there's a great start thanks to the stand shield on the assault he's able to open up with 2a oh boy the stagger does open up defiant one more time here more 2a charge nothing quite yet but the 2-2 series let's help out a little bit here to continue this pressure and it's still relentless defiant gonna get opened up one more time 100 meter two toast name 200 yeah even after the trade just the confidence to go for the run-up blow and then the confidence for the air orbiter right there toast now sitting match point to move on over to grand finals a couple shields good careful on that stagger tries to get the crumple stayed off dash seed not quite there six yeah, we even, pushes you away we saw the delay green shield but no punish wasn't ready for it now just toast trying to make anything happen and here they go found that first hit of that 5b uh oh, oh okay <laughs> yeah a little bit of concentration there right on cs was able to cover a time though but the toast already getting blocked into the wall here Oh, tried to go for the cheeky reset right there, but Toast was already ready to be pressing DP and ready to press the 2-2-B into the 2 3 6 c in that reset that reset situation and the full screen. So now taking it back to the other corner. CS yes, on the force function, keep your turn going. Oh yeah, absolutely. Nice, try to get a sneaky cross up in there. Like that was a very uh, tough to block situation there for Defiant, still able to find you know, the great positioning here to hold the corner. Oh yeah, not able to finish it. Was trying to reset once again, but Toast ready to just hold down back, oh, no. not deal with any of it, and take that third game 3-0 over Defiant. Gonna move on over to the winner side of Grand Finals. Just like these two players are gonna, you know, share these big normals all the way across the screen. We got the Blue Reverberation versus the Great Gatsby themselves, Star Underscore in our loser semifinals. We are back in that two out of three territory, so not as much time to get those download rounds. Right now, the Blue Reverberation is getting a lot of information from Star. Mars, excellent first off, but the Blue Reverberation is a killer name. I can't get enough. It's so good. It's so good. Nice. Locked into the corner. And goes for the Oki. With the wheel of doom. Oh, no. You thought. That was unfortunate. 3C start. It's not a reversal. It is if you believe, but right now the Blue Reverberation is believing even harder that they can take this round into their favor. Should be able to quickly close it out. Spending that meter. Spending that CS to get it back as well. Who doesn't love a 50 meter uh, EX special? That's, that's pretty nice, you 
Oh, great 3C on that spacing right there, seeing that they didn't want to go for anything too crazy, and then you're able to just blow them up while they're che not checking those ankles. Good block on the flash kick as well! Nice rusty nail to get the Asim. Unfortunate escape there, but start underscore, still able to keep that pressure. Oh, finds these little pickups right here, but not able to make anything big happen. And so the blue reverberation going to take control of the match once again. Whoa, what a 2C. You can wrap this up. Nice. Nice pickup from Star. Yeah, it's these stray hits that they add up a little bit here over time against blue, but it's going to be consistency that's really going to put Star underscore over the edge if we yeah. try to take this round and game. And certainly consistency here for this round start. Oh, and gets the falling JA and a quick little reset with the overhead right there. Japanese players would be saying sorry if that was coming through. But right now, Star going to be able to add up the damage. Oh Continuously 6-6-C, maybe going to connect. Yeah, just keep it keep it calm. That's Star. Yeah, it was certainly looking like a, a really tough match here for Star. Blue was really running with Ko, right? To, or mm -hmm. Kuan, excuse me. Uh, to carry over to the corner. I'm just making up all the anime names. They're just, they're <laughs> also here in this game now. That's what it is. If you just no. squint and turn your head to the right, it, it looks right though, so. Oh my gosh. As far as your enter 3C, it's not your turn. Blue was aware. Oh, okay. nice. oh. Yeah, we've been seeing a big thing. Both these players are like uh, getting, trying to go for these throw reads against their opponent, but they're just going for the direct counterplay. Starbin going for that back dash 3C. You know, Blue Reverberation going for uh, Assault JC attacks right there. And now finding some extra damage on a delay tech, and that's huge. Like, if you keep going for the delay tech and they keep getting that free 2, 3, 6 AA, it can just slowly add up over time again and again. Good back dashes away. Both these players very scared to stay too close to each other. The assault, yo. Know. No throw OS either from either player here. That's why we keep seeing these assaults over and over again. Yeah, because you could go for just a stand A anti air on some of these assaults right in the face of your opponent. And there is an OS there. Ah, uh, they can see through a tutorial. You learn something. Yeah. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, Gord doesn't have access to that due to the, the 5A being a standing low. That's so fair. Yeah, that is fair. They may be buffering it under that 2C right there with like the mm -hmm. 2C delay 4AD. Uh, but right now, not having to worry about it too much. Is this normal throw going to be working out into their own favor? Oh, nice reaction to the green shield right there. Going to get another big throw combo. Oh, what? Yep. Perfect timing on that CS there. Yeah, was ready for it. Had that CS to keep it safe and should be able to close it out with that 3C trip guard at the very end. Star sitting match point. Oh, no. Not sure what we we're trying to start up there, but the Wheel of Doom was certainly on its way. Blue going to get that corner carry one more time. No Oki set up, so you're going to get EX Assimmed on Wake Up. Yep, and another reaction to that green shield. Start making it look like clean work right now. Oh. Sim? Yeah, look at that. I mean, you had the grip breaks, so you can still take advantage of it. Oh, big call out in the charge C. Yeah, I was trying to find that cheeky overhead, but Blue Reverberation was ready to react to that 236XX right there. But now Star is more than comfortable just wait for that that, that uh, B Reaper to connect. Didn't spend the meter, though, because I don't think they were ready for that to uh, not kill. Interesting. Okay, there we go. There we go. That's a rusty finish. nail. Yeah, rusty nail at the very end. Star moving on forward to fight Defiant that they were looking for. But it is on paper, I think, a matchup that can be more positive Stop. into their favor. But a lot of 6 6 is not what you want to be seeing early into this game. We're both tilting and tumbling over each other here. But Star underscore dash up C. Time and time again, the corner carry. I'll show you a thing or two. Strong likely for Star, but now locked into this corner position. No resources available for Defiant quite yet, but Star is going to get smoked up in this corner still. Yeah. 
Time to hold the worm set as well. Good CSM on the reaction to the red flash right there. 623A into CS on a whiff, but Star already still ready for it. Gets that 2C to confirm and to take the first uh, round. Wow, wow. DP round star. Are you kidding? On both sides. Well, these players ha are sharing the same brain cell, clearly. Well, they're, they're clearly just having more fun than everybody else right now. True. That's, that's what's happening. Good ender. I like that. I love the, the JA with JA overhead uh, like setup that Star's been doing a lot more and more. It's been very, very effective, but I think Defiant already caught on to it and fully ready to capitalize on it. Oh, no. 5C brings it right back down to the earth. Embrace the gravity. Stop. Just going for the no cancels is so like disrespectful. Being like, yeah, you're not gonna punish. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna hold this with VO for both what is players. Yeah, they're they're check check the Discord. They're in a call together. I already. They know. gotta be like, yeah. what is happening? <laughs> All right, bring it down. Defiant with the CS here. We'll be able to finish this out. Was that five Grim Reapers in the corner? It was, it was it was four no cancel Grim Reavers and there's there hey there's the fifth one for you if you want if you want thank you thank you thank you I'm seeing into the future my bad <laughs> block yeah another fireball though opens up star underscore locked in the corner again yeah and this is the advantage like you know Defiant is definitely not someone who's like a very active Mercado player but they just ha they still have so much fundamental knowledge and even just taking that on a Slightly outdated version of the character can give you a lot of reward. You reach two, three, six C on the drop right there. Defiant does not care. Oh my god, they don't care in this match. I've I've seen a lot of oh no guard for us to save yourself from the potential grip break, almost guaranteed grip break there. Yeah, but now Defiant is after that guard thrust, guaranteeing the round going up 1-0. I wish I could. Yeah, I knew what we were watching right now, but I've seen so many just... Well, you were you were watching Defiant's 19th match of Merkava in a player uh. here on... And now you're watching their 20th. <laughs> with several DPs. With, with several DPs. Yeah, you can't you can't be doing that too... Okay, you actually can be doing that too much. You can do that as much as you want, Defiant. Still finding these confirms off these 660s. Six Opener here. Worm set up, of course. And this is sort of showing where it's, I think, uh, Defiant's, like, full knowledge of the character isn't as, like, relevant. Because they're going for uh, the, like, medium flight Oki instead of going for 2FF, which guarantees you the low flight Oki. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something you, would, you were seeing, like, Gravy Jones do more in their game. So that's that, that's that character knowledge uh, that will come up if you see Defiant still opt for these uh, pseudo-random select picks right here. Know about the meaty 2C right there from Star underscore Defiant. Of course, going to DP out with meter. Just locked in. You could do nothing as you jump at me, and I will block. So now, once again, we'll get C worms. But a CSM does not care about any kind of worm. Oki 2C connected, but no big follow up. But the 6B reset will. The sim here. Certain dominance of the cycle. Oh no. Just brought down. So like 200 meter here. We could just wrap this up if we cho so choose. And we certainly yeah. do with that Grim Reaper. Didn't even need the IW right there. Just see Grim Reaper dealing enough damage to close it out. And now Star playing a with a little bit more confidence in their game plan, I think, by finding that big round win. But the 2 3 6 C will connect. And fine, just going for the easy, the easy follow-up. The shields, massive grit lead, and shuts down Worms immediately with the 5C. Tries to get the 2C pickup. Star full screen situation. Tries to get Rusty Nail after the hit grab from Merkava and Defiant here. Good 2C though, saying, "Hey, you can't do those top, those uh, those top of the line flights right here, but that 6C will just connect at that max range and Defiant already ready to get a, to get that hit confirmed." Great patience, but you're down in health, so Defiant could just run away. Oh, yeah, I nice! 
I think that Star is like waiting for Defiant to do some sort of Hail Mary like they had been doing. But Defiant's very good at being like, okay, you know, I gotta gotta tone it down a little bit. I gotta play a little bit more calm to try to open you up. You can see they're just letting the worms do all the work right now. I mean, yeah, why not? You have all the health in the world. You don't need to overextend. Even though you drop it, you're still looking good. Honestly, Defiant with a 2-0 lead right now in Losers Finals. Yeah, yeah, trying to get that run back versus Toast, trying to bring out their uh, their sixth character of the night. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but we'll have to see, you know, can can Star make the, the comeback? We haven't seen any of these, uh, like, O2s uh, get the run back so far tonight. So, see if Star can change fate or if Defiant will uh, continue the course of history. Right, nice oh. assault. Yeah, using that assault JC to stop a lot of the options that like Defiant had been showing on that Merkava, but a good roll out saying no yeah. thank you, I'm good, you gotta hold this corner. Dash C though. Alright, oh this little assault, but not able to follow up. There's the sim. It's calling out on every 3D, this time staying same side. How much 3D are you gonna do? What is this match? It's a, it's a flashback to 2008 movie theaters, the amount of 3D that's happening on this. Oh, word? Now, Let's good go fireball ender. James Cameron's avatar in 3D again. <laughs> oh, opened up. And I think that's so terrifying to kind of deal with on the side of Star, because Defiant is throwing out like some of these very risky options. And it kind of throws your game plan off because that's not traditionally what you're used to, right? You know how Merkava should work in theory, but then you have something that you have to, that's unwieldy to deal with. Yeah, and another thing is that you're seeing Star sort of, uh, kind of hesitate in the options that they're selecting. Yep. Like you saw in that counter hit trade, because it's like, okay, I know what a Merkava would normally press here, but what is Defiant going to press? What is right. what is this person going to do? Not this character. And I, I think that's a big thing of why Defiant has been able to like take a lot of these hits and convert them into success. Yeah. This big factor over here cancels the overhead. There's another one. Look at that. The 2C comes through. <laughs> what can you do? Like, there's... There's no stopping this uh, defiant onslaught here. Yeah. And I think this is part of the reason why they, they picked Merkava as well. And you can sort of see, like, you're able to play at these effective ranges that Star can't really commit uh, commit with because it's just leading to these counter hit trades that then end up in their favor if you convert it off that. Uh, Another EX Worm setup. What is. <laughs> They're just Look. continuously going for the 63 A's. What's, what's wrong? What's wrong, Zero? I just, I would be flabbergasted. I am currently flabbergasted. Yeah, see, there it goes. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> too. We won't be late. The EXE will be closed by the end of the night. And right now, Toast with an early 6 6 C going to do a good job of uh, just saying, like, hey, we got to, we got to, we got to come down. We got to play some, we got to play some union. We're not oh, playing yeah. The so Toast showing up saying, this is how you play you. the assault. The, oh my God. This is essentially death here. You do have CS to spend, but we won't do it here because that would have been a meter build to carry over for that next round. Either way, strong start here for Toast with the perfect cross yeah. under on the overhead. Let's go. The That CS was actually a bit of a harder situation because of them having to be in the air and you have to go for the Rekka follow-ups. And you can sometimes get weird hits and drop out or not kill. So I think Toast is just wanted to guarantee that they take that round, trying to stay as much on this winner side as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. Nice. 5B start. About to pop into the Celestial. Nope, a little bit too far out. We got the regular grid, though. Or Vorpal Cycle, excuse me. Yeah. Divine did a good job with the Dive Peak OS to try to take their turn back, but Toast, even outside of that hit, was already ready to immediately tech forward, re-challenge the situation. Good throw tech out right there, and the 2B gonna connect. Shields, oh, very risky stuff. Fortunately, was able to recover there after that green shield. 2B still going to connect for Defiant, though. Try to go for JB Flight Oki. Not going to work, but that 5B will connect as Toast is trying to play in that range, but Defiant just has full control over it right now. Oh! Trying to get the 2A interrupt. Yo, a throw. Caught you staggering. There's the roll. Last touch on either side. Nice 2A start. 
Yeah, yeah, I like that from Toast right there. Being able to use that CS, didn't see a red flash, but they had known that's like, okay, Defiant loves to go for a button press right here. They're not gonna dash walk after this CS situation. I just get a uh, get a free uh, 2C and it fully worked out in their favor. Knocked out one more time with old Worm. Try to go for anti-air here. Um, back into the corner. Nice EX Worm one more time. With Flight Mix, we're already looking solid right now. Crossed up to a no confirmed, though. Yeah, cross up protection not saving you there. No, Defiant trying to just close this out. Doesn't want to give Toast any of these chances like this because one big hit will just continue lead that snowball down Toast's hill. Stephanie off and DP, get off of me. No, nothing. I expected a 2 6 e right there from Defiant, but instead they went for nothing. Just will guard us at the very end of that, uh, that VO. Beam. Oh, geez. Good cross under the assault. Already missing the mark, so opportunity for Defiant there and great patience. But Toast not out of it just yet, so just needs to make a couple of these throws work into their favor. But we'll have to dash walk in here. Very good blocks on the charge. Oh my god, actually, wait a minute. I the record yeah. series to follow through and the finish from OTG. That was a great 2-2-A two -two right there. Just no, like, I think Toast has a really great read on exactly when Defiant wants to go in and pre exactly press on Merkaba. So I think it's very, very good stuff for them right now to just like make sure, hey, you know, I got to take control here. This is my game. This is my tournament to win. Nice fail off there. Crossed up the dash C. Yeah, and you're seeing C fireball right there. Didn't want to go for the 2 2 C ender as a wooden cross back up. Defiant though does have a full grip on deck with that celestial, but the 6B second hit gonna connect. Pick up. Keep finish. Oh. That would have worked though. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter. That was, a, that was a quick, that was a setup. A hundred meter setup into the, the next TK orbiter right there. Think. Think Defiant, it was a setup. <laughs> and Defiant just rolling right back into it, wants to try to get this Merkava to work out versus Toast. But right now, Toast only a couple rounds away from closing out tonight, and a good 6 6 counter hit right off the bat. Snyder five A. Too serious to keep the blocking at the corner here. All right, now that you have meter available to you, or not meter, but grid available to you, you do got the CS opportunity to get the side swap off of that die kick. Nice. I like the roll attempt right there, but Defiant was already ready to check it. So just VO, get out of those worms and say, hey, you don't get a roll anymore. You're getting grid broken now. You don't get to tilt and tumble like you've been doing this entire set. Hold this. There we go. Yeah, you're going to have to hold these throws as they're coming out. 2TC provided a lot of extra chip damage, so this throw is going to look like it hurts a lot more than it actually does. Oh, nice. Still had the 6B follow up. Ooh, tried to meet her right back. I think it was the 2 2 meter that we were going 2 2 C as opposed yeah. to a DP opportunity. Yeah, I don't know if the 6 2 3 C would have actually, like, uh, it would have been too active in the early frames of it to, to get through. So I don't know if it would have connected right there. That's but fair. a quick little 5A into a gold throw at the very end. Toast sitting now, tournament point. That's a cross under 5A. up into throw so off the wall combo we have available to us just backs off respects the meter here does actually keep the opportunity to hold on to this vorpal cycle and i like this use of uh defiant using 214b trying to catch those anti-airs as you saw toast wanting to go oh. for the tk orbiter but it's yeah. not going to matter because one big counter hit like that will give toast the perfect they need to close out tns number six